Now, the other annoying thing about this head, here we have the extra nasty shit. Today, I'm finally making some more progress on the V-twin engine. So today's task is to clean the head prior to reassembling it and placing the valves back in. There's a bunch of swarf in there, and there's carbon in the ports and all over the valve seats. And there is also a little bit of vapor blasting media in and around here that all needs to be scrubbed out and then these seals need to be taken out and replaced. And I've got my little baggie of springs and valves, which as you can see, all need to clean as they have a decent carbon buildup around them. And then here's the retainers, also filthy. and the little locks that sit in the top of the retainer. So first things first, we're gonna take this over to the wire wheel. After cleaning up both valves, and as you can see, this valve isn't in the best condition. There's a small amount of pitting around the edge. So I'm probably just gonna lap these valves in, to be honest. And here is the exhaust valve. Still got a teeny, tiny bit of carbon on it, but I'm not too concerned at this stage. Just I'm gonna lap them in and have to clean them up anyway. So this isn't anything special, it's just petrol. As a good friend of mine has a rotary car he's doing up. He's had petrol that's been sitting in the tank for a ver not too long, not years and years, but quite a few months and he wasn't going to use it um, when running the car and after rebuilding it so he gave me about 10 litres of petrol and I, the only petrol thing I own other than my motorcycles which I wouldn't run um, this in is my lawnmower so seeing as I don't have to do the lawns that often at the moment with it being winter I just have this large amount of petrol stacked up. That's why it's got a blue hue to it as it's mixed in with a, a weak mixture of two-stroke oil. I've been helping my friend rebuild the RX-7 over the last few months now and helping him with all the little engineering problems he's come up against and at some stage I'm going to help him manufacture a new exhaust so let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that the process of um, cutting up measuring cutting and thick welding up a stainless steel exhaust because I'll do a video on that if you know people are interested might widen my audience or broaden the people that watch my videos which wouldn't be too wouldn't be a bad thing
here we have the extra nasty shit. Now it's time to remove this gasket. Should have done it a while back to be honest. Not bad. The old triangle scraper. Now the other annoying thing about this head. Oh, there you go. Is the the stud for the exhaust has broken off. So it looks like I'm going to have to drill that out. I wasn't quite sure how to set this up until I realised the drill press table could be tilted. Between the tilt and placing the head in the vise at an angle, I was able to use the old iometer to dial it in to within about one degree. Here you can see the key benefit of drilling a centre hole, how it's almost smack bang in the middle and the drill did not wander. And that beautiful sound was the drill breaking through the bottom of the stud. So now I've got the choice of using an easy out or drilling it out again and then putting through an M6 by one tap. So I've got here a number three easy out on my tap wrench and we'll see how we go. And I'm already not liking that. Now there you can see the new threads, um, they're not exactly perfect seeing as I just eyeballed the centre of the hole. Apart from what you can see, I should be able to make a stud long enough that we'll grab in those threads and we'll see how we go. It's only for the exhaust, so if it leaks, worries, I can recoil it later. And that was the easiest way to remove the stud off my spare cylinder head. Now we're back on the bench and I can put the stud. Obviously it's not the best thread, it's a little bit loose, but I can put the stud back in the hole. And yeah, I could wind two nuts onto it and back one of them off and do all that, but I should be able to get it tight enough with just the little vice grips. Tighten her up a little bit more. No, she's not tightening no more, so I'm happy with that. Now all we gotta do is hose it down with some compressed air again, and then we can start assembling it. Now we're back from the air compressor, she's all been dusted down and I found some valve grinding compound but I don't actually have the uh, little attachment so I'm going to improvise and see what I do here. Make sure the stem's clean. Actually, before I drop it down that hole, put some oil on it. Just something in a can just to protect the valve guide. 
I'll do the same for the inlet valve. So because my mate didn't leave the little suction cuppy tool with me, I got this little bit of clear hose. I've chucked it over the back of the valve. And I'm just gonna apply some light pressure. I can feel the valve moving on my fingertip. So we have a nice even spread of grinding paste the whole way around. So what I'll do is I'll do the other valve and then we'll clean everything up and see how we go. So here's a quick shot of the valve seats post grinding as you can see they're nice and grey and equal the whole way around so I know I've done a good job and then you can come over here and look at the valves and they have a nice equal wear line the whole way around and that wraps it up for this week so tune in next week and i'll take you through the assembly of the engine and putting the rest of the bits back in the head also we'll take a look at the cam chain tensioner and idler also if you haven't make sure to like and subscribe cheers